as quick as I can. All right, so this is Vocab Malone's video. Let's try to get it up here. When we think about the gospel of Jesus Christ, one great place to look at, one verse that encapsulates it, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Bad news. Everyone's a sinner. Good news. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Good news. When we talk about Hebrew Israelism, which is what we're going to be talking about today, <clears throat> the good news and the bad news are different. The bad news is something like this. There's a lot of nations, and they're all inferior to Israel. Israel is at the top ethnically, spiritually, physically, in every way at the top. That's how God set it up. So the bad news is for those other nations that are in some way on the bottom. It might mean eternal slavery. Some Hebrews like to teach that. It might just mean a second-class citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. It's going to be both. First, it's going to be slavery, and then you're going to be second-class citizens in the kingdom of heaven. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the Great Millstone. And Satish Brothers doing this thing in sincerity, in truth, and with charity. And man, you know, I'm going to hop right into it. You know, I played the little clip. You heard what Vocab said. The good news, the bad news, this. He basically said, what's going to happen is bad news. You know? And, it, and honestly, that's not the case. You know, um, these judgments must happen. You know, Edom must go into captivity with the heathens. At the end of the day, you will, you know, minus Edom, they're going to be utterly destroyed. The rest of you nations will actually get to enjoy the earth. You won't have to worry about poverty at these levels. You won't have to worry about pollution, walking around. Hey, before COVID hit, you know, different, you know, Asia, especially China, they already had the wet mask. You won't have to worry about America shipping its trash and waste to your countries and paying you to, uh, uh, to hold it in landfills. Everything is going to be biodegradable. The earth is going to, and the earth is going to be perfect. They're going to get to enjoy the earth. This is Proverbs 29, 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear the rule, the people mourn. The whole earth is in mourning right now, man. From the animals to the, to the, to the humans. All right? From poverty to just wickedness. Everything's out of order. Can't enjoy your family. Got to worry about. And hey, you can't even let your kids go in the damn the, the backyard. Or even in your front, without having to worry about somebody uh, uh, taking them. This is madness, man. Sirach 10 and 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. And that one that is profitable is Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai is going to rule with his elect, which are of the nation of Israel. Because that's what the gospel is, man. The gospel is the good news. All right, we're going to grab a precept that actually tells you what the gospel is. Not some man, you know, hurting his feelings and missing, and just making stuff up out of his own ass, man. It's Isaiah 61 and 1. The spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, is upon me because Yahweh had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. That, the word gospel means good news. That's what good tidings mean. So this is the literal definition of gospel to preach good tidings to the meek he have sent me to bind up the broken hearted so like the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives all right to proclaim liberty to the captives no matter how you want to put it we are captive here you can't say oh just just leave just go we're captives do we have to go and try to get citizenship in some some place else somebody else over us man that's not how it should be all right Israel is above, and we're, hey, we're supposed to, it's Galatians 4. We are above you heathens, man. And that's okay. When, when, when we set things back up in order, you heathens are going to be straight. 
You're gonna get to enjoy the fucking earth, you know? You're gonna have... Fuck, not fucking earth. You're gonna get to enjoy the earth, man. All right? After you serve your judgment, like we have to serve our judgment after your judgment, you know, you're gonna get your land back. We're gonna... You're gonna pay tribute to us. You're gonna have wives, children. You're gonna get to watch your children go grow older because there's gonna be less wickedness in the earth. All right? You won't have to worry uh, uh, about all the, the possibilities of the different ways just gruesome death or just evil can come to you, man. Because you're going to be ruled by Israelites going to rule in righteousness. And therefore, more blessings can come down. But it's Galatians 4 and 26. They always say, well, just leave. You're captive. Look, where the fuck are we going to go? To put ourselves to subject to another heathen to rule over us? Come on, man. It's Galatians 4, 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. All right? So Jerusalem is to be free, man. All right? Hey, we're supposed to have sovereignty. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 1. Hear, therefore, ye kings, and understand, learn ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear, ye that rule the people, and glory in the multitude of nations. For power is given unto you of the Lord, and sovereignty from the highest, who shall try your works and search out your counsels. Because being ministers of his kingdom, you have not judged the right, nor kept the law, nor walked after the counsel of the Most High. So we, you know, we got our judgment because we went off as a nation, but we're to have sovereignty. And the Lord has given that back into us, man. All right. That's plain. So we, we're not to be under these other heathens. All right, uh, he, he mentions that we are uh, Israel is above, man. It's actually this 19 and 6, uh, and yeah, 5. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And we went off, so we got brought low. But Deuteronomy 30 and 7 tells us the Lord is gonna, uh, uh, uh well, Deuteronomy 30 starting at 1. In the land of our captivity, he, we're going to turn back into the Lord. And really, he's turned us to him all right, by putting his word in us, giving us the gift of faith, that free gift, which is to Israel. All right. And um, now we're returning to the Heavenly Father, you know, through Yahweh Shai. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which I shall speak unto the children of Israel. And then Peter says the same thing, man. First Peter two and nine, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a holy nation. This is not to the world, man. A peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, which in time past were not a people. All right, and that goes to Hosea, the first chapter. We lost our heritage. We became not a people. Jeremiah 17, 4. Again, we lost our heritage. Who did we become? Proverbs and Bibles. We were nobody. But are now the people of the Most High. The Lord has called us back unto him, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So, hey, the Lord is dealing with Israel. Let me get this one of your fellow Edomites to tell you, man. The only race he loves and likes is Israel. And the God is a racist. The only race he loves and likes is Israel. And the God is a racist. There you go. Anybody that reads the scriptures and, and not try to lean to their own understanding can see what we're telling you is true. You know, once it just is what it is. Now, does that mean we're not going to be, you know, hey, the Lord has taught us to learn mercy and to judge righteously, man. So we're not going to use our power wrongfully when we rule over the heathens after their servitude because they got to get their hardcore bondage. You know, they got to get broken. But after they serve their judgment, man, look, enjoy the land. Eden means paradise. Pleasure. This is Revelation 2. We're not making these things up, man. This is Revelation 2. 
and um, 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he, hey, over the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. So, hey, it's a, only those who got, who got understanding can understand this. All right, if we're going to rule over the nations, how can the nations therefore partake in this salvation and in, in the glory in the kingdom? No, man. You're going to be servants. Point blank, period. Okay, so this is back in Isaiah 61 and 1. The spirit of the of the Lord Yahweh was upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prince to them that are bound. And who are the captives? This is Joel. Three and one, for behold, in those days, and at that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring. So look, that would include Edom. Edom has not been taken out yet. Because the Lord said, when our captivity is up, he has a great judgment for the world. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shapat, and will plead. And that word plead means judge with them, the Hebrew Shapat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Plain and simple. So that's the gospel. The Lord is going to gather us up. And what comes with that? The Lord judging the nations. Let's keep reading this Isaiah 61. To proclaim liberty to the captives and opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2, Isaiah 61 and 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh and the day of vengeance of our power to come for all that more. So the day of vengeance is coming. And that day of vengeance is what? A comfort. That is good news. To you, yeah, I mean, it will be bad because it's evil for you. Hey, just like when we had to get taken down, you know, it was bad, but essentially it had to happen. All right. When you read in Daniel, um, uh, uh, when you read um, the three holy children, all right, they said the Lord was righteous. They still praise the Lord when we were in captivity and going through our chastisement because we sinned against the Lord. So you heathens are wicked. You have to accept the fact that you fucked up and you have to deal with a judgment. We dealing with it even to this day, even the brothers. Brothers go through all type of hell, you know, and you may hear about some of it because some of it is Esau being unrighteous. Hell, a lot of it is, but it's, but what brothers mindset is and what we mentioned is the fact that, and we deserve worse, really. It's the Lord's mercies we are not consumed. Now, of course, the wicked won't think like that, but the fact of the matter is that's the, that's the case. The Lord is righteous. This is proper judgment. It's good news. All right. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. So this comfort is to us in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. All right? Period. That's the gospel. The Lord delivering Israel and putting you heathens down under us, man. That's what the scriptures say will happen. That's the prophecies. You can't hide from the prophecies, man. You being a, a damn demon for trying to teach anything else, really. Dude, hey, the scriptures are plain. You all the Gentiles. What about the? We break it all down. The scriptures say it plainly who those Gentiles are. Romans the ninth chapter is a perfect chapter because it mentions the the Jews and Greeks. And then Paul quotes Hosea the first chapter to let you know what he's referring to. 
when we when the Lord said La um uh uh Amaya or Lo Ami, no not people, not my people. All right, we became nobody. We became Greeks. We became uh, uh Mexicans. We became Australians. We became all these things that are the place we've been scattered to. But the Lord said we're going to return to Him. Just do I'm thirty and one, and it's your, and that says in Hosea as well. Do I'm thirty and one, and it shall come to pass that when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. So we had to be scattered. We had to come down very low. We had to become proverbs and bad words. So we lost our heritage. Now a hey, we black, African American, two continents, man. All this weird shit, man. Come on. Which I have said before, then thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy power have driven thee, and shalt return unto Yahweh thy power, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And that's happening. That then Yahweh thy power will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations. That's why it says in the Acts. Because let me let me pull this up. Back on this TikTok, if I didn't close it all the way. And this comment says, But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. You know, and people like to use that to make it seem like the Lord is dealing with all nations, man. All right. But that's not what it means. We've been scattered everywhere. So now the Lord is delivering us from all these nations. This is a uh, Tobit breaks it down perfectly. Or the Apocrypha, that's that they, that's not part of the Bible. It's not canon. Well, in 1611, this is part of 1611. The biblical destruction group took it out. Furthermore, all right, why did Yahweh Shai keep Hanukkah? The feast, of, you know, the feast of dedication. That happens in the Book of Maccabees. Therefore, the apocrypha is canon. Unless you're going to tell you how Shai, the one that the world even calls, you know, JC, don't want to say that idolatrous name, the son of God. He's a Hebrew with a Hebrew name. Acts twenty six. He said in the Hebrew tongue, his name is Yahweh Shai. Okay. Are you going to tell him he's going off? <laughs> Well, good luck with that. And by good luck, I mean enjoy your missile. Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be the power that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom. For he does scourge and has mercy. He leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. So we got brought down to the lowest pit of hell, like it says in Deuteronomy, which part of that hell is being scattered. Confess him before the Gentiles, the children of Israel, for he hath scattered us among them. So we are going amongst these Gentile nations to find the Israelites that scattered among them. James 1 and 1. James, the servant of the Mosiah, and the Lord Yahweh Mashiach, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. This is who is two. All right? We became strangers. We became Gentiles. Let me prove that. Obadiah. Obadiah 1 and 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off ever. Edom will never exist after you serve his judgment. And the day that thou stoodest on the other side, and the day that the strangers carried away captives his forces, and foreigners enter into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem. Even thou was as one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother and the day that he became a stranger. All right, we lost our heritage. It was taken out of our, hand, our land. You know, our, our, our heritage. Lost who we were. We became strangers. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah. In the day of their destruction, neither should as thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. All right, so we became Gentiles. We became not a people. But now the Lord is calling us back. And that is the gospel. Deuteronomy 30 and 
3. That then the Lord thy power will turn thy captivity, have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy power have scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will Yahweh thy power gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee, no matter how far we've been scattered. We could have went to Mars. The Lord would have got us from Mars. If Esau had the ability, you know, which he doesn't, if he was capable to go to Mars and star shit, and he took some slaves up there, and we was there, hey, the Lord would gather us from there too. And Yahweh thy power bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And that's salvation. That's the gospel. <laughs> The second address. Chapter 9. And. Um, seven. And everyone that shall be saved. And shall be able to escape by his works. And by faith whereby he have believed. By ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. That is the gospel. That is the good news. That's the promise that was given to Abraham, down to Isaac, down to Jacob, down to King Solomon. We will have a land and King Solomon will rule forever. All through the scripture, it's all it's nations mentioned. Nation, this nation, that nation. When was it ever the Lord mingled the nations, man? The Lord don't change. While in the kingdom, now it's going to be okay for. You, you want to have an, a, a United States of Israel. It's not going to be like that in the kingdom. Well, we have this illusion that everybody's equal. No. The heathens that's going to be amongst us, they're going to know that they're our servants. And after that thousand years, they're going to be happy to be our servants, man. We're going to look after our servants. This is uh, Sirach. Seven. Is this the one I wanted, though? It's another one. 7 to 20. Whereas thy servant worketh truly and treat him not evil, nor the hireling that bestoweth himself wholly for thee. Let thy soul love a good servant and defraud him not of liberty. Are right, we going to look out for our servants, man? It's another one. It says it's, the servant is your life or your food, uh, your help. If thou, uh, Sirach 3330, if thou have a servant, let him be unto thee as thyself, because thou hast bought him with a price. If thou have a servant, and treat him as a brother. For thou, here we go, thou hast need of him. You know, hey, we, you know, we're going to have need in the sense of, you know, we can do this stuff ourselves, but why? <laughs> you know, thou hast need of him as of thy own soul. If thou entreat him evil and he run from thee, which way would thou go to seek him? You got to think about it. You have a servant and you overbear them. If they run away, you're going to go look for him. Like, damn, no, get your ass back here to do this. So you might as well be good to that servant. Now, of course, a heathen wouldn't run away from us. It wouldn't make sense. Well, they, you know, unless you get a spirit of pride on them. Then they're going to get whatever judgment comes with that. Lord knows that's in the kingdom. For the most part, hey, we're going to be good over our servants after that thousand years, man. All right. A good servant is going to, is a good thing. 
Deuteronomy 30. And um, see, you know why you scared of fucking captive, you know, the, the captivity? Because you think we're going to do you like Esau wants to do us, man. How they did us in captivity. And you only got to worry about that for a period of time. Then afterwards, it's going to change, man. In, in the sense of, you, you know, he's going to get their land back. And then we're going to have tribute. And then we're going to actually get servants too, man, from you heathens. But we're going to be merciful. And that's the difference. We're not doing this to, out of hate. Nah, man, we're doing this because that's order. Kings need subjects. You're not going to just keep a foot up your ass for no reason, man. Deuteronomy 30 and 5. And the Lord, and how will thy power bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed? And thou shalt possess it. He will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord, thy power, will circumcise thy heart and thy heart. And the heart of thy seed to love Yahweh with thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And Yahweh with thy power put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And that's the new covenant. We won't sin anymore. And Hebrews 8 and 8 is that new covenant is for Israel only. Because it goes back to the prophecy that was given, man, in Jeremiah 3. Uh, uh, 33. All right. Oh, man. Isaiah 16 and 1, the son, and the sons of strangers shall build up their walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. So the, even the rulers of, this, of these nations, they're going to serve us. For my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had, have I had mercy on thee. All right? <laughs> He's going to come to us, man. Israel will be over the nations. Isaiah 2 and 1, the word of that... The word of Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. He's going to come and learn of us. Your, your uh, uh, resources, we're going to get our cut off top. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the most, the power of Jacob. He will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. We're going to push a righteous vibration out there. And how do you sum up the law? Okay, love Yahweh with all thy heart and soul and love thy neighbor as thyself. It's going to be harmony on earth. Peace. And the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem, he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords in the plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come ye, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. So firstly, it starts with us. We get the salvation. We get this light. And we're going to rule over the world, and we're going to do it righteously through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashami Yahweh Shai. Okay? And it's many more precepts, but let's get ready to wrap this up, you know, Lord willing. It's Acts 1 and 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, this, this is what the uh, apostles asked Yahweh Shai when he was back raised from the dead. Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So like, is now the time you're going to give us the kingdom again? Because that's the prophecy. Say, we're going to rule again. The Yahweh Shai say, no, that's not how it works. 
No, he said, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons. It ain't for you to know when it's going to happen. So that means it's going to happen. But this ain't time, which the Father had put in his own power. That's what's written in Daniel. Okay? Daniel 2 and uh, 44. And in, the, and in the days of these kings, talking about, you know, the, uh, the kingdoms that's mentioned, all right, with the statue, with the feet being America last. All right, Rome 2.0, because Rome was the legs, and the feet is an extension of Rome. And in the days of these things shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. So this kingdom, all right, it's not going to have other nations mingled in or co-rulers. Like right now, you got America ruling with its allies. No, it's not going to be like that. It's not going to be you ruling with us. And having these allied nations that rule with us, no. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. This kingdom is going to jack up these other kingdoms. Take all these other nations down. This mountain shall be above the other ones. Like we read in Isaiah 2. Alright? That's just what it is. We read the Revelation 2 already. Gonna get power over the nations. Let's get the psalm too. And eight, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. All right, that's just what it means, man. That's what it is. We're gonna rule, starting with Howard Shai. We're gonna rule over the earth and inherit the heathens. You know what? Let's get numbers. Let's get Leviticus, Salakia. <laughs> this Leviticus 25 and 44. Both thy bond men and thy bond maids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bond men and bond maids. Moreover, the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for possession. That's just what it is. Y'all are made for us. They shall be your bondmen forever. We're going to rule over you. We will possess you. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. All right. And that's law. Jeremiah 30. 11. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered thee, yet will I make a full end of thee. You, your, your nation, Israel, I will make a full end of you. You sons of Jacob are not consumed. But I will correct thee in measure. We, and, and we have been getting our correction. And will not leave thee altogether unpunished. So these heathens are going to be broken down. What's going to happen to them? Verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And we've been scattered to where? We've been spoiled by who? All the nations. To the four corners of the earth. Therefore, all you nations must be spoiled and go into captivity. And all that prey upon thee will I gear for a prey. That's just what it is. Judgment, man. And after that judgment is served, you're going to go back under your own tree, man. You're going to get your lands back. And we're going to get you, we're going to get your forces, your, you know, your resources. As it says in uh, Isaiah, you know, the gates will continue to be opened. And part of your resources are your offspring. We're going to own you. We're going to get servants. We just read it. That's going to be our inheritance. All right. Uh, the axe. I had one, not the axe, but I don't remember. Spirit give the spirit. The spirit give the spirit wants. Um. Damn. Maybe this is. Uh, 
Well, well, spirit, spirit like the wind. Acts one and six again. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, "Lord, wilt thou this time restore again the kingdom to Israel?" And he said unto them, "It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in His own power, but ye shall receive power after after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth." All right, so that's the salvation, man. In fact, I ended on this. Uh, so this is Psalms. Fourteen and seven. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when the Lord bring it back to captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. That is the good news. That is the gospel. Kahalami Shalom Ababa Ball.